Hello and welcome to the very first in my new vlog series, which I'll be running to give you a little idea of the the day-to-day -day things that crop up in my plumbing life. I'll still do the tutorials, but I just thought this might be a little bit interesting because I've turned up on a job at the moment and just a very, very common problem that all plumbers or DIYers will recognise is that the stopcock is not working, so I need to be able to shut off the water somewhere else, which I'm going to find, I'm going to show you where, and replace it, that stopcock that's up there with a new lever valve which are far more efficient. I'm actually in it to change the water pump which is just down there. Uh, the water pump doesn't work anymore. So the shower which is actually just behind camera at the moment is not working. The customer um, has not been able to use the shower for three days. So I just thought I'd come over here, try and get it changed quickly. As is sod's law in this, in this job, something that's meant to be very, very quick. It's gonna take a little bit longer because I wasn't able to switch the water off. I'll edit in some, um, some footage of of where the tank is and where the pump is situated in just a second, but it's um, it's, it's very, very annoying. I need to get to it, but I need to find the water source. If it was normally a house, I'd go outside, I'd find the stopcock in the street. It's not, we're, we're in a set of flats, a block of flats, an apartment block, and somewhere outside in that corridor, probably in the ceiling, it's gonna be an, a dedicated stopcock for each and every flat, but bearing in mind we're dealing with uh, over 50 separate apartments, it's going to be a voyage of discovery trying to find them. So what I'll do is I'll just take you through uh, that process and then the changing of the stopcock to a lever valve. And once that's done, I'm going to actually start the job that I initially came here to do. Let's get to it. Okay, the light is not fantastic, but that's the stopcock there. And the problem that I have with it is that, well, number one, I can't turn it. Normally I would try and get something on it, get a little bit of leverage to try and turn it around, but this, the pipe work's not fixed at all. In fact, it's an absolute mess, really. So if I, I can't get any leverage on it at all, so I, I'm not happy, considering I'm on a first floor, floor flat, to try and um, do anything other than actually just replace that and isolate it elsewhere. The reason I need to turn it off is because we have a water tank here, and the water tank, is feeding the pump and the cylinder, which is just under there. Um, I'll try and get a better picture of that, I know it's quite dark. Um, unfortunately, we have some lever valves going to the cylinder. Lever valve there is working. Uh, we have a gate valve there, hopefully you can uh, see that. That's not working at all. And as you can see, the conditions that we have to work in, it's a very, very tight and small working area. Um, I don't really want to muck around with it at all. So uh, let, let's go and find out where that water uh, comes from. Uh, so I can turn it off, um, isolate that valve there, that stopcock, and then at least I can take the water out of this tank, change the pump. Okay, here I am outside the flat. As, as you can see, there's a corridor. Um, you can probably see the ceiling up there. Uh, these up here are our tiles which which can be moved all the pipe work all the utilities are up there what i've got to do is obviously i know i'm in flat number 46 and i've got to somehow work my way up and down this corridor uh looking up to see if i can find the source of the water <laughs> let's go okay success at last you'll have to excuse the poor lighting um it should be enough for you to see it. Uh, these are all the feeds for all the apartments. Obviously, I want to get it right. But somebody, whoever did it last, um, very helpfully labelled it so I can see that that's number 46. So just going to turn that off. You can see that's now perpendicular to all the others. So I'll test it, make sure that, that is the correct one. Um, but then that should allow me to drain down the tank. Excuse the camera working here. I've just got to put the camera anywhere that I can find to put it. These are probably very, very stiff because they've been in here a long time. There we go. Actually, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I've seen worse. I've managed to loosen this nut here, which hopefully you can see there. This one. That's gone. They're both. They're both done. Um, there we go. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a little bowl just underneath, just there, just to catch any water that comes out. Uh, but I, what I've done is I've switched on uh, the only mains tap in here, which is the kitchen tap. 
so there should really be no header pressure plus the ball valve going into the tank is down as well and there you have it that's now off not too bad at all i'm going to replace it with uh with the lever valve these lever valves are so much better these things these stopcocks just get seized shut they're, they're next to useless the lever valves are fantastic so just gonna pop that on i need to check the depth of the olives is correct first which it is so that's all gonna work absolutely fine yeah um what i'm gonna do is i'm really gonna i've got some compound but, um, but I'm also going to put some PTFE tape on there as well. It's just sort of belt and braces. These are industry standards. Nuts. They're still, um, they're still imperial. Um, but that's going to work absolutely fine. And then that has the whole lot isolated so I can then turn it back on. Uh, this is uh, PTFE tape. Polytetrachloride ethylene. As I, I think it is anyway. Um, just want to get a load of it around there. I'm going belt and braces on this. Um, you, you can't really be be too careful with this sort of stuff. So um, I'm, I'm putting this on, and then I'm going to put the compound on, which you'll see in a second. This stuff here is compound. It's jointing compound. Again, it's an, an extra layer of waterproof seal. I'm just going to put that into the nuts itself work it work it round keep turning it work it round and that what will happen is that will that will compress that will compress up obviously this uh this lever valve comes with its own nut and olive but i'm, I'm as i say i hadn't intended on doing this job at all but you'd be amazed how many don't work i'm just putting compound into this nut here as well how many times i turn up on a job and it doesn't just to, you know you can't switch the water off from where you ought to but as i say the lever valves are much much better i'm more than confident that this will be working in 10 years time 20 years time the same can't be said for what i've just removed okay almost done just making sure both ends are properly tightened i mean it's going to be under mains pressure it's going to be an awful lot of pressure you don't want to take any chances with that at all but you can over tighten these so you've got to get it you've got to get it just right never ever hold this while you tighten it because you could loosen that uh, anyway but that's that's on that's, uh, that's on that's off time for me to test it Okay, I've it's all a bit cosy in here. A lot of plumbing is, is done in very, very tight spaces. I say, uh, I went back into the corridor and turned turned it on in the ceiling. If you remember where that a uh, lever valve was, there, I'm going to test this one now. So I know the water's primed to here by moving this lever. It should allow the water to go this way and back into the tank, which is basically just under where the camera is. There, we should. If I stop talking, we should hear it. That's it, I, I, I guarantee you heard that because it's very, very loud. Um, I don't want to rank for too long because I don't actually want the tank to fill up. The whole point is to empty that tank so as I can change the pipes and take the uh, take the pump out and put the new pump in. I mean, I've not even started what I came here to do yet, but at least I know this is much better, much better for the customer uh, for future use if they need to isolate their water to, to the whole apartment, to the whole flat. Uh, that's, that's good, that's good. Anyway, on to the next phase. A little update here, sorry about the, the lack of light. Um, these, are, these are so seized up, these, um, these push fit joints, the red and black things that you can see there. I've actually had to cut, uh, I've actually had to cut the pipe uh, just, to, just to get them off. Um, the big problem, the reason I had to, there's the cylinder there, but the reason, and the tank is just above. That's where you saw me working earlier. The reason I've had to, to turn the water off and drain down that tank is because we have a lever valve here which is great that enables me to turn off the cold feed to the pump but there's no lever valve here so whoever's put it in has not really 
Just give it a bit of light on the subject. It's not really given much consideration to future users. So on that second pipe um, along this one there, I'm going to put a red lever valve now for the hot, uh, the hot feed that, as you can see, is coming out the top of the cylinder and running down there. Um, yeah. Anyway, they've they've actually they've actually installed a flange, which you can see there, which is the right thing to do. But but anyway to do all that and not install a lever valve is crazy. The gate valve, which is the red one there, doesn't work. So having to cut everything out. Okay, the joys of plumbing. And just a little update for you. So I've taken the old pump out. I've cleaned up the pipe work. I've put the new lever valve in, the new red lever valve, which I said I'd be doing. Got to the point where I was about to put the shower pump in, which is just there. It's just resting on the toilet. Don't worry, it's not going into the toilet. Um, and basically, when to marry up uh, the necessary pipes and where they should go, looked for the washers, couldn't find any washers. Searched through the box, no washers at all. And then when I looked through the manufacturer's instructions, it said I've got, I've got to supply my own washers. Unbelievable. I mean, how much must a washer must cost? What five pence, something like that. Uh, the, the pump was. Uh, well, about 80, 80 to 100 pounds, can't remember exactly, in all honesty. But now, I mean, an absolute killer of the day, and this is unfortunately all part of plumbing as well. I've now got to drive to the suppliers, which is uh, two miles away, two and a half miles away, and all the way back to get four washers to fit that. How easy would it have been to put them inside the box? I don't know. Well, that all took far longer than it really should have done because of the faulty stopcock, which didn't work, replaced by the lever valve, as you saw, and of course the ridiculous journey out to go and get four washers, which really should have been included in the pack. I, I do find that completely baffling, but look, these things happen, the customer's happy, the shower is in situ, and, uh, the, sorry, should I say the shower pump is in situ, and, and I'm on my way back home, so uh, there we go. But anyway, if you have enjoyed this vlog at all, if you'd like to see a little bit more of the same, then please do let me know i'm gonna attempt to do a few more interact with you guys a little bit more uh, than i have been doing certainly but it's always difficult on these channels because if you look down at some of the comments some of it's absolute dogs abuse just for trying to help out and give a few plumbing tips so uh, listen for everybody that has subscribed and is following i really do appreciate it i'll catch up with you next time where i'm sure there's going to be some Oh, just some ridiculous problems to overcome on what really should be a very, very easy job. Thanks for watching.